I'm Susan Handy. I'm a professor in environmental science and policy at the University of California at Davis. And I'm going to talk to you today about induced travel with a focus on driving in particular. So I'm sure you've all experienced the pain of congestion. In more technical terms, congestion is a function of the ratio between the volume of travel and the capacity of the roadway system to accommodate that travel. Uh, in other words, the volume to capacity ratio, or what we sometimes call the V over C ratio. So traditionally, when we thought about the problem of congestion and the goal of trying to reduce congestion, policy focused on increasing capacity. In other words, widening the roadway system. And that approach led to big projects like the I-405 widening in LA a few years ago, um, this monstrosity in Houston where we've widened the freeway uh, to fill whatever space we have. But what happens when we add capacity? Well, in the short run, the new capacity means faster speeds for car traffic. Faster speeds mean shorter travel times. And with shorter travel times, people make longer trips, they take more trips, and they're more likely to take trips by car. All of that adds up to more driving, and that's what we call induced travel. And then, of course, more driving creates more pressure for more capacity. So we end up in a vicious cycle. We can also explain induced driving using basic Econ 101 principles of supply and demand. So on the x-axis, we've got the volume of driving. On the y-axis, we've got the cost of driving. In other words, the, the travel time, that's the main cost of driving. And then the volume of travel that we observe on the road is where the demand curve and the supply curve cross. Now what happens when we add capacity to the system, that's equivalent to shifting the supply curve to the right so that the cost of driving goes down. And when that happens, the supply curve, the new supply curve and the demand curve intersect in a new spot and we get an increase in the volume of travel on the roadway system. And that's what we call induced travel. It's the increase in driving that we get from the lower cost of driving that the added capacity created. Now what happens when we add capacity in the long run? We get additional effects. So the new capacity leads to faster speeds, which creates better access for the land that's served by that freeway. That better access leads to development in those areas. New development can lead to more population as well as lower density development. And all of that can lead to more driving. And again, we get this vicious cycle where more driving then leads to more pressure for more capacity. So that's how induced travel works. Uh, again, we can look at it in the perspective of um, supply and demand curves. And in this case, what's happening is that we're shifting the demand curve in the long run as the new capacity attracts development and lower density development that's effectively shifting the demand curve so that we get an even higher uh, level of volume on the roads. So the research documents this very clearly. There are lots of studies out there using lots of different methods and lots of different data, and they all pretty much conclude the same thing, that if you expand the capacity, you, you are gonna see an increase in the volume of driving measured as vehicle miles traveled. And the, the relationship over the long run is about one to one. So a 10% increase in capacity is gonna give you about a 10% increase in the volume of driving. So what that means is when we increase capacity, we're not seeing a reduction in congestion. What we're seeing is an increase in volume. Both of those are going up with the net effect being that we're seeing essentially no change in levels of congestion. So public officials are starting to recognize this fact. The mayor of Houston acknowledged this for their freeway system. Um, the I-405 project in LA 
Lots of the analysis after the fact is showing that congestion levels have not, in fact, improved. Uh, and even the public is starting to get it. So a survey in the Bay Area uh, showed that most people are pessimistic that congestion will ever go away. And certainly, if we keep um, trying to address it through capacity expansion, that's true, as the research shows us, because of this induced travel effect. So what's the alternative? Well, instead of increasing capacity, uh, maybe what we should be doing if we're trying to reduce congestion is think about bringing down volume. That's a whole nother lecture, so I'm not gonna get into it today. So the short answer is that what we really need is a paradigm shift in transportation planning. The old way has been to focus on making it easier to drive. What we need is a new way where we focus on making it easier not to drive. And I would refer you to my other lecture on accessibility versus mobility, if you want to know more about this. Just as a side note, um, you might be asking yourself, what about taking out freeways? What happens when we remove freeways? Well, we have a lot more examples of building freeways than we do removing freeways, but there are some examples, including in San Francisco, where two freeways were removed after they were damaged in the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. And the studies that have been done have shown that, in fact, congestion didn't get worse when the freeways were removed and replaced um, with a ground level boulevard. So that's pretty promising too, and again suggests that um, maybe we need to be thinking about something other than freeway capacity. And that's the end, thanks a lot.